Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Uh, last Wednesday, if you maybe you saw it, I filmed uh, a book haul some because I was in Amsterdam and bought new books. Um, and one of the books was about the brain, memory, neurological uh, disorders. Um, and I said that I have a whole collection of these brainy books and I got a lot of comments uh, on YouTube but also on Instagram and Twitter and mails, uh, people asking for recommendations about brainy books, you know, like Oliver sex kind of books or books that deal with some sort of brain disorder. And so I decided I'd make a video. So 10 brainy books that I can recommend if you're interested in the subject and it's a combination of non-fiction, non-fiction memoir, but also fiction. And before I start with the, with the first book, um, I just want to clarify, I, I do read scientific, you know, books or uh, articles about neuroscience and uh, brain um, research and stuff like that, but in this haul, it's all books for non-scientists. So don't click away if you are uh, if you are interested in the brain, but you think, well, I'm I, I I'm not a science reader. These books are specifically written, especially the fiction, of course, but also the non-fiction for non-science uh, readers. And the first one is the book that started it all, and that is Helen Thompson. Uh, Unthinkable, an Extraordinary Journey Through the World's Strangest Brains. Helen Thompson is a British uh, science writer. She has a degree in neuroscience, so she knows what she's talking about. Um, and this is a collection of eight tales of real-life people with, quote-unquote, strange uh, neurological disorders, either uh, from an accident or from other reasons. Um, I started, uh, this was the book I hauled, and I started it already, and it's really well written, it's, it's explained well, um, and it's engaging in the storytelling, so if you are looking for a book that, like I said in the introduction, compares a little bit to Oliver Sacks, multiple stories, then this is certainly a very good pick. So the advantage of a book like Unthinkable, if you're interested in, in brain disorders and brain diseases, is that you get a multi, you get presented with a multitude of cases and persons. The disadvantage, of course, is that each case is about 20 pages, so it's not really in depth. So maybe you are more looking for something that focuses on, on one case and uh, one person. And then I can recommend Susan Cahalan's Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness, a memoir which came out in 2012. I talked about this book already multiple times and I will leave a link to a review, a more extensive review down below. Uh, but this is about uh, a young journalist, Susan, who went in her early 20s and she started what at the beginning felt like flu flu-like sim symptoms. Uh, she was dizzy, um, she had uh, numbness in, in her arm and leg, and the disease progressed rapidly uh, with epileptic seizures, and she was hospitalized uh, when she was in an almost catatonic state. She couldn't move, she couldn't speak. Uh, the doctors, um, yeah, had written her off as a, a psychiatric case, either schizophrenia or epilepsy or psychosis or a multitude of these things. And thankfully, uh, she encountered one doctor, a real-life Dr. House, who was able to make the right diagnosis because she, uh, Susan suffered from an autoimmune disease, an inflammation of the brain, which sounds horrible, and it was, but it was curable. So there was medication, and she got well. Um, so this is more uh, focusing on, on, like I said, on one case, but it also uh, is a very good example of uh, how little we know about the brain. And it makes you wonder how many people might end up in psychiatric wards m misdiagnosed because nobody really knows what's wrong with them. Um, uh, brain on Fire was also made into a Netflix movie. I will leave a link to the trailer down below. But the movie didn't quite convince me as much as the book. It, it sort of somehow, somehow it lacked a certain suspense, but you might want to check it out anyway. And although uh, Susan Cahalan's book is a fantastic read, you might think, well, this is um, a case one of the, in one of a million, although that is doubtful. 
But one of the um, brain diseases and brain disorders that is much more common is, of course, uh, dementia and or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so if you want to read uh, a memoir about that, I can highly recommend Wendy Mitchell's memoir, Somebody I Used to Know, which came out just last month and which I reviewed and talked about extensively in my uh, recent reads um, Sunday, last Sunday. I will leave a link to that review down below. Susan, uh, uh, sorry, Wendy Mitchell was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's, which means Alzheimer's developing in quite young, uh, at a quite young age. She was only 58 when she was diagnosed in 2014. And this is her memoir about the way to the diagnosis and beyond, um, especially focusing on her way of finding coping mechanisms uh, to deal with the disease uh, in order to be able to still live an independent life. So if you want to read something really well written and interesting uh, about uh, a person um, suffering from Alzheimer's disease, I can highly recommend Wendy Mitchell's memoir. Another memoir that I can highly recommend is Vanessa Potter's Patient Age 69, The Story of My Second Sight, which was published last year, 2017. Vanessa Potter uh, was a successful um, filmmaker. She worked in advertising uh, when she suddenly experienced problems with her eyesight. Uh, it started with a sort of a blurry vision, but it got worse and uh, she quite rapidly uh, was completely blind. She also experienced uh, a paralysis in her limbs. And when she was hospitalized, she was uh, diagnosed with a rare uh, brain disorder called Neuromyelitis Optica Spectrum Disorder, NMSOD. Um, I reviewed this book, uh, leave a link to the review down below, and in the show notes of that review, you will find links to this particular disease if you want to read up on it. Um, uh, the disease is treatable, um, and Vanessa Potter regained her eyesight and also her the movement of her limbs, but her eyesight now is not the same as it used to be. She experiences colors in a different way, uh, black and white in a different way, and she also has um, some sort of connection between um, uh, color and smell. Um, so the, the brain, from, from the perspective of what you, what you see, works differently even after the disease. So this is an interesting memoir, not, also, not only because it deals with the disease and again, how little we know about the brain, but um, also it deals with the after, the way she now experiences the world with this different eyesight. That's why it's called The Story of My Second Sight. And I can highly recommend Vanessa Potter's book because she not only tells her own story, but she gives um, uh, good information without being info dumpy about the disease and about the way uh, it, it is treated and uh, how she copes with it after the treatment. And the last uh, memoir I want to recommend is Siri Hustfeld's book, The Shaking Woman or a History of My Nerves, which she published in 2009. Siri Hustfeld is an American uh, writer, most famous for her novels, but she also writes essays about art, for instance. And this book uh, came about when in 2006 she, sh she spoke at the memorial of her father and she certain suddenly experienced uh, a sort of a seizure. So her, body's, her body started to shake violently from the head down. It subsided um, after a couple of minutes, but it came back. Um, Siri Husford also um, uh, suffers from heavy migraines. Um, and has always been interested in, in brain science, in neuroscience, in psychi uh, psychiatric evaluation of the brain. So with the example of her own experience of some sort of malfunction, if you want to call it that, of the brain, she wrote this book, which is part a memoir, her own experience, but it also part is more of an essay where she looks at the brain and her her case in in particular but more the brain in more general terms and how it is treated and how malfunctions of the brain are treated from various uh, scientific fields so like neuroscience uh, looks at the brain in a different way than psychiatry or psychology and this approach 
where you get all these different points of views, I think is very interested, interesting. So this is a book uh, for somebody who is, first of all, interested in this particular case, but who is also uh, interested in a little bit more of a scientific approach to this uh, particular case. One of the most famous uh, cases in brain research, and especially in research about memory and memory loss, is the case of Henry Molaison. Henry Molaison was 27 uh, when in 1953 um, he was treated for severe epilepsy and uh, uh, had a brain surgery where part of his brain um, um, was removed. Um, it cured his epilepsy. He never had an epileptic seizure ever again, but uh, the, the tiny part of the brain that was removed also had severe uh, side effects because uh, Henry Molaison from that point on couldn't make new memories. So in other words, he would remember uh, his past up to his 27th birthday, but from then on after the surgery, he could only um, uh, recall or have a memory of an event up to 10 minutes. So if you, for instance, um, greeted him, he would talk to you, but if you then left the room and came back 10 minutes later, he would have no recollection whatsoever of having ever uh, met you. Henry Molaison uh, was extensively researched, and one of the main researchers uh, was Susan Gorkin, and she wrote a book about her work with Henry, um, a permanent present tense, because he, Henry Molaison, lives only in the present. The book was published in 2012 and is um, the yeah, the story of the decades of research that Susan Gorkin uh, uh, conducted with the help of Henry. There are some ethical issues um, uh, involved here which are not, in my view, extensively discussed because Henry Molaison, um, uh, he agreed to do the research, but you can have serious doubts whether he was in any state um, of doing so because he could never... Uh, recollect what he did 10 minutes ago. But still, if you are interested in this particular case, which had so much influence on brain research and memory research, then Susan Gorkin's account is certainly a good book to read. We move on to fiction now, but we stay uh, with Henry Molaison uh, for a little bit because Joyce Carol Oates in 2016 published The Man Without a Shadow, a story which is based on the case of Henry Molaison um, and the researcher Susan Gorkin. So this is a fictionalized story of a man without a memory or without a shadow. Um, I, I had mixed feelings about the book. I, I thought the, the way uh, Joyce Carol Oates uh, fictionalized uh, the research and Henry Molaison's life were really well done. Uh, but there was a love story involved with uh, the, the main researcher, the female researcher and her boss, which I thought was completely unnecessary and I didn't like it. So it was not quite a success for me as a novel. But if you don't mind that love story or if you enjoy it um, and you want to read a fictionalized account of Henry Molaison's life and the research involved, then you might want to pick up uh, Joyce Carol Oates' book, The Man Without a Shadow. If you're looking for a fiction author who deals with uh, neuroscience and uh, brain disorders in a, uh, in a very knowledgeable um, uh, way, Lisa Genova, American author, is always a safe bet. Lisa Genova studied um, biopsychology and then got an, uh, a PhD in neuroscience from Harvard before she took uh, up fiction writing. And all her books uh, center around one particular disease or brain injury or brain disorder. The most famous one is obviously uh, still Alice uh, about early onset Alzheimer's. So if you, uh, for instance, are interested in that particular disease and you pick up Wendy Mitchell's a memoir, which I talked about earlier, then this is a very um, true to fact a novelization of the same disease Wendy uh, Mitchell experienced, that means early onset. So uh, Alice in the book is also quite young uh, when she is diagnosed. Um, but just look at Lisa Genova's work 
Um, for instance, Left Neglected is a novel that deals with a brain injury after a car accident. Uh, the main female protagonist um, uh, has, after the car accident, her whole left side is gone, so to speak. Uh, she can't feel her left leg, her left arm, her left whole left side. It's still there physically, but she can't feel it. Uh, and the, this is quite, unfortunately, quite a common um, uh, injury when you have a severe car or motor motorcycle accident. So if, if that is a topic that interests you, then Left Neglected uh, would be a good choice. Um, another book that I can really recommend is uh, Inside the O'Briens, um, which deals with another uh, neurological disease, Huntington's disease. Um, a, a man who was in his you know 50s and healthy and all of a sudden has these strange mood swings and and um, completely uh, acts completely out of character and then was uh, diagnosed with Huntington's disease which is a, a horrible um, the degenerative brain disease which is uncurable and which will lead to an early death in the end um, so it's it's quite a uh, a heavy book, but most of Lisa Genova's books are not happy ending books. Like uh, Still Alice, of course, there is no cure for Alzheimer's, so it's not a happy ending. Um, but because uh, Lisa Genova comes from the field and she has the knowledge and she can write very well, I can highly recommend her books uh, if you want to read fiction works about uh, certain, like I said, brain diseases or brain disorders or brain injuries. So those were 10 books um, focusing entirely on the brain or the malfunction of the brain. And I have one bonus book, which is a, for people out there who might want to read or rather want to read detective or thrillers. And that is Alice Laplante, A Turn of Mind, which was published in 2011. Um, and it's a really good thriller. Um, and in the center of it all is a murder. And uh, uh, the... One of the suspects is a retired surgeon, a uh, surgeon who suffers from dementia. So this is a, a book that is not in, in that sense, like books by Lisa Genova or the book uh, by Joyce Carol Oates, centering completely around um, the, the brain or a disease of the brain. Um, but still, it plays an important uh, part. And I think Alice Laplante did a superb job of capturing uh, the disease and incorporating it in a, a thriller, a mystery, but treating um, the dementia with respect. So these were the 10 plus bonus, plus one bonus books about brain, my brainy book recommendation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know whether any of the books interest you or whether you have recommendation um, for brainy books. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.